On this week's show, Tesla's Q3 earnings, Hyundai gets excited about 50 fuel cell cars, and things go from bad to worse for Volkswagen. These stories and more coming up next on 10. Enjoying today's show on YouTube and want to read the stories you're referring to today? Just head to our website at transportevolve.com forward slash T-E-N, where you'll find today's show notes, as well as links to the latest future car news, buying guides, tech primers, and car reviews. It's Friday, November 6th, 2015. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield, and thanks to our Patreon supporters, we've successfully completed our first ad-free month. You guys rock. It's the start of November, which means, as well as having one more number on my age, it's also time for us to look at the monthly sales report, courtesy of our good friends at Green Car Reports, who do such a good job of keeping track of such things, we can't improve on their hard work. With the new Chevrolet Volt now in the hands of some customers, Volt sales during October doubled on September's figures, giving us 2,035 volts sold across the US and a year-to-date total of 11,299. The Leaf, meanwhile, suffered a drop in sales compared to the same period last year, managing just 1,238 sales. That's driven in part by the impending arrival of the new, longer-range 2016 Nissan Leaf this month and, we note, not enough of a drop to make it lose its position as the number one plug-in car this year. As always, Tesla doesn't release monthly figures, but BMW recorded 986 BMW i3 deliveries, while plug-in hybrids from Ford Toyota managed a combined 1,635 vehicles. Of note, too, is the Volkswagen e-Golf, which, despite the ongoing Dieselgate scandal, and there's more on that later in the show, managed to shift 596 cars this month, a far higher figure than we've seen before for this particular plug-in. The start of November also heralded Tesla Motors' Q3 earnings report, which, as we discovered on Tuesday, detailed a slight rise in both deliveries and production for the quarter, as well as continuing widening losses for the company. Yet, Wall Street responded pretty well to Tesla's Q3 earnings call, thanks in part to the news that Tesla is ahead of schedule with its gigafactory in Reno, Nevada, has continued high demand for its Powerwall and power pack energy storage projects, and is now fully committed to unveiling its third generation Tesla Model 3 car next March. Tesla has also announced that it paid back the full $50 million it borrowed last quarter using its asset-based credit line, and is hopeful that recent upgrades to its Fremont production facility will mean it should produce a total of between 50 and 55,000 electric cars before the end of the year. So if you're a Tesla shareholder, things should be looking pretty rosy about now. On the same day as Tesla's Q3 earnings call, Nissan North America announced the official pricing for the 2016 Nissan Leaf, available for the first time with a choice of two different battery sizes. As with last year, the entry-level Nissan Leaf S, which comes with the 24-kilowatt-hour battery pack, starts from $29,010 before incentives, offering an EPA-approved range of 84 miles per charge. Unlike Europe, where customers can pick between a 24-kilowatt-hour or 30-kilowatt-hour battery pack for the higher trim-level models, US customers want a Leaf SV or SL will find the longer range 30 kilowatt hour battery pack, which gives an EPA range of 107 miles per charge, comes as standard. That's great news if you want more range, but it's worth noting that the base price for each model has increased proportionally to that larger battery pack, with the mid-range Leaf SV starting from $34,200 before incentives and the range topping SL coming in at $36,790 before incentives. We've yet to drive the US spec model yet, but check out our review of the European spec 2016 Nissan Leaf at our website if you're interested in buying one this year. Things just got worse and worse for German automaker Volkswagen this week with the news on Monday that the US EPA was issuing it with a second notice of a violation concerning additional alleged misdeeds surrounding diesel vehicle emissions. This time, it centers around the V6 3.0 litre TDI engines found in some of Volkswagen's best-selling SUVs and sedans, including the Volkswagen Touareg, the Audi A7 Quattro, and the Porsche Cayenne. Like the previous transgression, which Volkswagen admitted to, the EPA says engine control software cheat switches are to blame. But this time, Volkswagen is vehemently denying the allegations, although it did execute a stop sale on all affected vehicles this week before announcing the very next day 
that it had discovered its own discrepancies in emissions control and fuel economy ratings for European market diesel and petrol vehicles. Stock prices, as you might have expected, have tumbled ever since, and it seems like there's little hope left for the automaker, which had once so proudly claimed it was the cleanest out there. For shame. From one very sad German automaker to one very happy one in the form of BMW with this next story, which took time out this week to celebrate just how successful its BMW i3 electric car is proving with emergency services around the world. The brand, which has always been popular with police, fire and rescue services due to fine German engineering, powerful engines and the ability to drive at extreme speeds without falling apart, says its special range of BMW i3 emergency vehicle X-Works add-ons are proving popular with emergency fleets looking to green up their image and make some killer savings on fuel bills too. Indeed, with a powerful 125 kilowatt electric motor and commanding driving position, the i3 is perfect for cutting through busy city streets with those blues and twos blaring away. Sadly, we don't have any B-roll of police vehicles in action, but BMW says it now has BMW i3 electric cars working in police, ambulance and fire services in London, Berlin, Milan and Los Angeles to name a few. So if you're out on the street and happen to see one in the carbon fibre reinforced plastic, so to speak, let us know in the comments below. Back in July, Tesla Motors announced the launch of a trial customer referral program in which it rewarded existing owners with kickbacks and prizes for referring the most new customers to the brand over a given period. The person that made the most referrals, it said, would win a brand new Tesla Model X. That program has recently ended with Norwegian blogger Bjorn Nyland winning the overall referral competition. But this week, Tesla announced the program would continue, albeit with a few tweaks. First, the financial $1,000 service voucher Tesla was originally offering has gone for each referral made by an existing owner, but the $1,000 discount remains for any new customers placing an order through the program. There's also a new top prize, a brand new Tesla Model S P90D with ludicrous mode for the person who makes the most referrals in each of Tesla's three key markets. Other prizes include a Tesla Powerwall fully installed in your home, as well as trips to the Tesla Model 3 launch in March and Tesla's massive Gigafactory launch event. So expect more of those annoying referral codes to pop up online in the coming weeks. And if you're not a fan of the system, well, just stay off the internet. Okay. When it comes to designing and marketing a new vehicle, it's traditional for automakers to take years and years to bring a vehicle from early motor show concept to production vehicle. But as we told you this week, Detroit giant General Motors is working at full speed to bring its Chevrolet Bolt EV to market as soon as it possibly can. Talking to Autoblog Green, GM's environment and energy policy and communications guru Shad Black said that GM was super keen to make sure that the 2017 long-range plug-in car hits the market by the end of next year, with simultaneous launches planned in all 50 states when it does so. Sounding like a fully confirmed electric vehicle advocate, he said that GM was keen to market the $35,000 car as the long-range vehicle that everyone can drive, not just a high-end luxury sedan for wealthy types. That dig, a thinly veiled attack at Tesla Motors could work for a while, but with the next generation Nissan Leaf rumored to be offering 200 plus miles of range per charge and Tesla's own mass market Model 3 due sometime in 2018 for a similar price, we think GM is going to need more than just affordability if it wants to market this car to everyday buyers, including a whole lot of sales training for its nationwide network of dealers. Do you agree? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. If I told you an automaker was getting all excited about bringing 50 new cars into Europe this week, you'd probably laugh at me in that kind of piteous way, which suggested I might need some psychiatric help. But that's exactly what happened this week over at South Korean automaker Hyundai. You see, the company celebrated shipping 50 brand new iX35 hydrogen fuel cell crossover SUVs, sold in the US as the Hyundai Tucson FCV, to Europe, bringing the total of hydrogen fuel cell SUVs sold to EU customers to more than 250. And yes, that's a small figure too, but in the world of limited production, limited availability hydrogen fuel cell cars, 250 vehicles is something of a big deal, and far more than Toyota or Honda has managed to date. And that apparently means kudos is in order. Okay, so we picked this story to have a little giggle at Hyundai's expense, but we'll admit, in the world of FCVs, 
250 cars is indeed far more than any other automaker has managed thus far. But until there's at least 100 times that many iX35 FCVs on the roads of Europe, we're still going to call this nothing short of a limited market compliance car. OK. And finally, there's nothing worse than arriving back to where you thought you parked your car to find it gone, especially if that car is an expensive luxury car like the Tesla Model S. But for one Tesla owner in Vancouver this week, that's exactly what happened when she discovered her year-old Tesla Model S was missing from the parking lot she left it in. Having accidentally left a spare key fob in the car, a thief had been able to gain access to the Model S and just drive it away at speed, presumably thinking they had the best catch of the year. But there's a catch. Unbeknownst to them, Tesla's always-on internet connection was able to report the location of the missing car directly to the owner's phone, and then the owner's husband then relayed that to the local police force, enabling them to catch the perp red-handed, so to speak. So if you're a criminal and you're thinking about lifting a Model S, don't bother. Well, that's it for today, but you can find all the news that's fit to print at our website at transportevolve.com. Catch up with us on Twitter at Transport Evolve or check out our latest shows on the usual YouTube channel. And if you liked what you saw today, consider keeping us independent and impartial by visiting our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash Transport Evolved and pledging your support from as little as one dollar, that's less than a pound, per month. And because of the way that Patreon works, it really doesn't matter if you can only donate one dollar or if you end up donating a hundred dollars a month. It all helps. As always, there's a lot we haven't managed to fit into today's show, including Tesla's plans to put an end to people being stupid with autopilot software, a brand new battery technology which promises a super energy dense battery that could hit the market in around five years time, how the end of electric car incentives in Georgia has killed EV sales there, and we review Nissan's latest autonomous vehicle prototype. So when we're done, be sure to head to our site to read them all. Thanks for watching. I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield. Have a great weekend, and until next time, keep evolving.